something else, buddy. <laughs> I'm Aaron Throckmorton. Welcome to the show. If you guys have watched Giving Back in the past, you know that Africa is one of my favorite places to go. And what makes it even more special is when I get to take first timers on their very first safari. This week, I get to follow along with three generations of the same family as they go on their first safari in South Africa. Hello, I'm Stan Tordale from Helena, Montana. This is my first safari and so far it's what an exciting trip coming over. Planning this basically all my life. I looked, recall we're looking through National Geographic books and just dreaming about how Africa was. Now the dream has come true and I'm waiting for the excitement and adventure of a lifetime. I'm here to hunt Gemsbach, Kudu, Nyala, and Red Hartebeest. And possibly anything else they talk me into, but right now that's my four in my list. I'm excited to see these animals in their natural habitat and, and pursue them and go on my rifle hunt. Hi, Colin Tordale from Helena, Montana. My first safari and I'm here at Trophy Game Safari in South Africa. Being on safari, it's something you know, I watched growing up my whole life and it was always only a dream. And then my dad always wanted to go and a few months ago we decided to give Aaron Throckmorton a call and he helped us book a hunt down here and we can't wait to get started. I'm Mackenzie Tordale, I'm 14 years old and from Helena, Montana. We were planning this trip for a little bit and my dad kept it quite secret and then one time just before Christmas he told me that I was able to come. I'm looking forward to just seeing all the animals and experiencing everything. That first day after everyone got settled in and had a good breakfast, we then took everyone out to see the sights of Africa. Here we go. We're gonna dump bear now. <laughs> <laughs> you see the new You know, it's a really long flight to Africa, so before you start any safari, you want to make sure you go to the range and make sure that your rifles are still sighted in. The height is good. The height, the height doesn't bother me. Even. Oh, Look at him, yeah. kiddo. Oh, right Look, there. Right here, to your oh left. God. Look to your left. As we watched the sun set that night and sat around the campfire, everyone was really excited to get the safari started the next morning. Giving Back is brought to you by True Flight Adventures, your source for hunting and adventure travel all around the globe. Hammer Bullets, advanced technology, simply better. Safari Taxidermy, preserving the memory of your hunt for over 40 years. Kenetrek Boots, for the trail less traveled. Magnus Broadheads, superior quality and outstanding performance. Coppersmith Global Logistics, your import specialist for 25 years. Smile, Morgan. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you look good on camera. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys, <clears throat> excuse me, we're back in South Africa. The third annual Giving Back Safari. It's kind of crazy to say that out loud, but um, it's day one of the, the safari. Stan went out today after Inyala and, and Kudu, I believe. And Colin went to sit in a water hole for Wildebeest and uh, Impala. So Tino asked me to come out to a water hole that produces a lot of animals and uh, <laughs> We're looking for water buck cows today. 
um, people think of Africa and all this trophy hunting and everything. And, and it is true, there's a lot of trophy hunting that goes on over here, but there's also game management and conservation. So um, he needs to get the numbers down for the, for the water buck a little bit. So we're gonna try to help him with that today. So uh, it's a beautiful day. Um, there's not a cloud in the sky. So the warmer it gets, I think this um, activity is going to pick up at the water hole today. So uh, it's going to be a fun one. That day produced a lot of animals at the water hole, just no water buck showed up at all. The next day Tomas and I headed back to that exact same blind. Now water buck cow was our number one animal that we were looking for. But also, a big mature water buck bull, we want to take one of those if one happened to show up at the water hole. We had some water buck cows in that morning, but Tomas was adamant about only shooting a really old cow, one that was out of her prime. What made things even more challenging was that we were starting to see some bulls, so we had to look them over to see if there were any shooters as they were coming in. We did see five to six different bulls that afternoon, and quite honestly, all of them looked really good to me. But Tomas said they were too young and we had to let them go. One of the nice things in Africa is everyone coming back together after a day of hunting spending time around the campfire, telling stories of the day, while dinner cooks over an open flame. <laughs> Goody steaks. I'd say... What? Nguni. Nguni. Oh, what? It's a, it's, a, it's a traditional African cup, but they're very lean. You know, the ones we have here, we don't ever inject anything. They live like the wild animals out here, so they're very lean. No injections, no antibiotics, no nothing. We don't even dip them for ticks. So very lean meat, it's going to be as similar to an eland steak. But come and try it out. I've got, I've prepared it medium rare, for you guys eat it like that. So medium rare, I've got a uh, mushroom whiskey sauce over there for the steak, and then we've got a pop tart there. Pop is the staple food of Africa. Uh, it's it's a little bit like grits, not quite grits, but it's in there though. That is a tart that's layered with other savory stuff. And we've got pumpkin fritters on the other side there. And then we've got spinach and cheese fritters on the other side. And then uh, potato salad. You're going to have a dessert afterwards. Come on. That next day, Tomas and I were back in the exact same blind and we had a lot of animals in right away. We finally had a water buck bull and a cow show up and Tomas said this was the cow he wanted to take out.
see it. How come I'm shaking so bad over a cow? I am shaking. <laughs> I can't I can't I put it right on the shoulder. She's she stopped right there too. She's not going for her. I don't know what you and I are going to do if we get a bull in. We're going to fall apart. <laughs> Still blood on it. All right, got the arrow. <coughs> good blood. We, we watched the shot back and it actually looked good. Um, about 22, 23 yard shot, I guess. And it went all the way through her. I actually saw her run over here and stop, um, but then I lost her. So we're just gonna, we called Morgan in and we're gonna go look for her, see if we can find her. <coughs> Some bloody. Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay, let her walk up. There she is. There she is. Got it. So, which means that Elan was watching you. The whole time? Yes. Congratulations. Good track, brother. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. What's the exit? This was it. This that's was it. the exit. That's the exit, yep. Yes. Oh, was so the, the entrance is probably a little higher. Yes, this is good. You can come out on the right spot. But not a lot of blood. No. But the tracks were very much visible. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, 100 yards maybe? Take yeah, 100 yards, 150? 100, not more than 100. Yeah, it, the, the shot was good. She just didn't bleed much, but you know, every time we come over to Africa, everyone talks about trophy hunting and how bad it is and everything like that. And I'm not going to get into that debate right now, but there's also a conservation piece and population control. And that's why we did it, right? Yes, that's what we are doing here. Because this is an old cow. We need to take it out anyway. So she was old, past her prime. Yeah. And, and you can see she already, the, the coloring is not like normal color. She has already lost the color. Okay. Yeah. That's the stuff people don't see back home. Conservation. 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 Yeah, conservation at its best. At its best. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, brother. You're welcome. The next day I was lucky enough to follow along and hunt with Colin, his wife Michelle, and daughter Mackenzie as Colin went after one of the most beautiful animals in all of Africa, the sable. It didn't take long and we had sable in right away that morning, but Tina wanted to make sure we took out the right bull and not something too young.
Das geht noch nicht, oder? Congratulations. That's awesome. It's about a last minute decision, eh? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Since we talked about him in the blind, I've been thinking. Yeah, you well, know? you didn't say much since then. Mm, like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> Later that night, I went and sat for my water buck bowl, but unfortunately, I didn't see a single water buck that evening. But we had some great entertainment back at camp that night. So last night that water buck never showed up. Um, the guy said after they dropped me off at the blind, they actually saw him about a half a mile away, but he never showed up at the water last night. So it was a good night. We saw a lot of eland and some ostrich and a few other things, but really nothing to shoot last night. So today we're at a blind I've hunted, you know, quite a few times. It's a really active blind. You know, there's a lot of eland, a lot of impala, and um, that's actually what we're looking for this morning is a female impala. We're gonna take it to one of the local schools around here and donate it to some of the kids. Um, don't get me wrong, <laughs> we're still looking for zebra, water buck, and diker. And um, if, if one of those three comes in, gives us an opportunity, we're gonna take that. But this morning there's a few more animals on the list, so we're hoping it's gonna be a busy day here. As you sit over these water holes, you'll always have those top animals that you're hunting for. But sometimes that changes quickly when a particular animal comes in to drink. Sure to say, but it's been a slow morning. A few Elan came in, and this Boar Warthog came in. And he wasn't that big. He was he was a good pig, but I've shot bigger, so I wasn't gonna shoot it. Then we looked, he had a snare around his neck from a poacher, and it was cutting into his neck. You could see that it was hanging off the side. So we decided to you know take him out. I'm sure he's in a ton of pain. And uh, the shot looked good. You know, he took off to the right of us, so we're going to call the trackers and you know, see if we can get this pig. We'll see. Really good blood trail. The dog's on it, um, but there's blood the whole way, so I don't think it's going to be much further. Oof, oof, oof. Look at that. That's what I was dragging. Yeah. So here's the pig. Looks like he's been there for a while. Yeah, I think he's had this on him for a while. Yeah. Look at his cutting into the throat all around him. So, you know, these poachers come in and set snares for these pigs mainly, right? But other animals as well. Other animals as well. And this is what happens, they get caught in these snares. And unfortunately, this old guy was living like this. We don't know for how long, but we think it was quite a while. Pretty sad, really. People talk about trophy hunting and there's no need for it. Well, there is. And not only the conservation piece, but the economical piece. With the money coming in, we can help fight some of these guys and put measures in place to stop some of this. But it's a long battle, isn't it? A long road. Crazy. Tune in next week to watch the exciting conclusion to this South African giving back safari.